Welcome to another video of Nerd Social. Uh, this time we're going to be tackling a little bit of thing about dragons. So, trying to get ready for how to train your dragon, we thought we'd talk a little bit more about dragons. Today we have a nice group of guests here that are very knowledgeable about some very specific skills that's going to come in handy for the talk. Uh, let's just start introducing ourselves. I'm Paul. I'm a special effects prop maker. Uh, Steven, I do costume design and wardrobe. RJ, builder of random shit. I'm Eric and I'm a sculptor, a fabricator. Awesome. So one of the things that we want to talk about is not just the idea of dragons generally, but we're going to talk specifically about how to possibly maybe build a dragon. If it's possible, what we can kind of build off of historically, and then, you know, generally, did dragons actually exist? Who knows? Maybe historians. Um... <laughs> So the first thing we're going to talk about uh, about dragons primarily is uh, the historical representations of dragons. So now dragons have existed for a very long time, um, like in folklore. Um, some people have said that it kind of goes back to the idea of the first discovery of dinosaur bones. And that maybe someone saw a dinosaur bone and they thought it would be an actual monster. And the first thing they could kind of equate to, because they didn't have like, archaeology at the same level as we do today, they kind of just assumed giant lizard dragons. Uh, it has basically been existing all over England as well as in Asia, um, and it permeates all the way through even Sumerian culture in like 3 BC. So that being said, what kind of dragons have you guys heard about, like the types of dragons that have existed? Have existed? Well, in folklore. <laughs> okay. Not like, not like <laughs> real, we're not there yet. We're not uh... <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> uh, like fire breathing or ice breathing. Those are the traditional, like, European style. Um, and Chinese the, dragons. Exactly, the Asian cultures. Now, those dragons specifically don't have wings, usually. They're more yeah. like a serpent snake yeah. type, uh, and they have, like, talons, like, yeah. four arms with, like, four claws on it. It's very specific. Yeah. But there's also a hierarchy with those, because um, if you look at the different things that time, the number of claws they have on their hands mm -hmm. signifies rank. So only mm -hmm. the, the emperor is going to have a five-fingered dragon. And then a lot of people consider some of the Greek things like the Hydra being a dragon. Yeah, if if your classification for what constitutes a dragon is a large lizard or <laughs> serpent, then sure, Hydras can be dragons. <laughs> Number of heads it doesn't really matter. Yeah, <laughs> and then there's there's wings, of course. Like you know, the European mostly have wings. Uh, then of course, Asian don't. But then there's also like the Waverns. Like the English French kind of form. Yeah, so I've always been a fan of the the wyvern design, the usual bat like wings connected to the four limbs rather than the more traditional European style dragon four legs plus wings. But yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's a sort of physiology that you don't usually see outside of like insects. Uh, we don't really see vertebrate animals with that sort of limb structure, including wings. And so it's the funny thing about that is I think that might actually go down to a concept of maybe someone found, like, skeletons or dinosaur bones. Because if you have two different skeletons of dinosaurs in close proximity, you might just in your head kind of merge them together. Like, imagine if, like, an Aerodactyl and just, like, a regular, like, brontosaurus are, like, right next to each other on, like, a dig for some reason, whatever it was. You might just think they're all the same animal. Well, Aerodactyl is a Pokemon. <laughs> um, I wasn't going to say it, but yeah. But, uh... <laughs> The, the pterodactyl pteranodon style. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. That, that, you tell me they don't exist now? Uh, now I'm upset. Uh, I don't think we can get into the I, debate of what he actually I, exists. I've caught three of them. <laughs> you tell me they don't exist. That's that's really lucky. They're, uh, they're hard to find out in the wild as just a random cache. You oh, usually yeah. have to find a, a research task. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Right. Well, if we're talking Pokemon Go, you need to find Okay, sorry. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a little bit <laughs> off topic on this well, one, though. Charizard is still <laughs> related to this whole... Yeah. <laughs> but then there's also dragons that don't have wings that are in English lore as well, like, you know, drakes and things like that. Not all dragons need wings. <laughs> well, the, the terminology also gets a little fuzzy. Um, you, you have uh, Smell referred to as alternately a dragon or... The, the last of the, the great northern red drakes. Um, and the depiction of Peter Jackson's Hobbit films actually changed between the release of Unexpected Journey and Desolation of Smog, where 
if you looked at the original footage in the theatrical release, it was very clearly going for the four-limbed dragon style uh, with uh, with four legs plus wings, whereas subsequent releases, after they had finalized the design for Desolation of Smaug, you have the more wyvern style with the, the four limbs being connected to the wings. Yeah. And it's actually really funny, uh, even um, like... The Bible, specifically the story of the saints, you know, what was it? I forget the name of the saint, but he actually slayed a dragon. St. George. George. Saint George. Yeah. So, I mean, like, the fact that it's permeated so much to so much, like, where it could be even, like, in a Christian religious kind of belief structure, it's just kind of crazy that it's, it's been talked about so much to that degree. But, I mean, moving a little bit past that, now, we talked about the different types of dragons, so what does a dragon really need to be a dragon, like what kind of attributes does it have to have? Does it have to have wings to be a dragon in your mindset? Does it does it have to be large? Could it be small? Could it be uh, scaly? Could it be feathery? I mean, what 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 do you guys think is a quintessential dragon? I don't think it needs wings, but dr most dragons fly, so at least should fly. And then there's the difference between like the more Western and European, or Western and Asian, like Eastern, where it's the fire versus the water. Mm. So there are differences there, but the flying is definitely throughout so a lot of them. Does it need to be able to like spit water or spit fire? No, no. I mean, they're like connected to the elements. All right. They're like connected to nature, um, serpent-like or reptilian of some sort. Yeah, I definitely think reptilian, able to have some sort of breath weapon. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my preference is wings, and they fly. There, um, there actually was this. Um, what was a book? Was made into a movie. I never saw the movie. I never saw the book. I never read the book uh, called "Fly the Dragons." They actually go into those type of details, and they talk about what the fire breathing was in that story. The dragons ate um, limestone to create the gas in their body to cause them to lift, and they ate, their wings are more for gliding. Um, and then, in order to land, to release the gas, they would blow up the wing, but they have a thimble in there mouth that sparked and it would catch and the fire was actually part of their flight to be able to land again that's, into their flight that's yeah. a really awesome like, and, kind of mentality like they're a hot air balloon yeah and then they go into <laughs> about how the reason why they always have a hoard of gold is because they do uh, breathe fire if they try to sleep on hay or anything they'd set it on fire gold is the one thing they can sleep on and not set it on fire so gold has like a really low like, like melt rate but it's, just, but it's a soft metal oh I know it's a highly ductile metal yeah. Far more comfortable to sleep yes. on than rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those don't burn at all. Really. I mean, it's a scorch. <laughs> well, it takes a much higher heat level to, to melt earth. <laughs> what do you think, Paul? I think one of the key attributes of a dragon that we haven't really touched on is size. If, if it's not big, it's not a dragon. Um, what right? about the fucking dragon, though? Well, that's like that's a different thing. Right, right, there. <laughs> right. Wait, but they, in the they had tiny in the dragon riders, yeah, uh, dragon riders it's the the small fire lizards are referred to not as dragons. Uh, in in the Vlad Talkosh series by Stephen Brust, you have Jarrods being small shoulder dragons that aren't referred to as dragons. It's a distinct species. What about Kitty Pride's dragon? That's a small little dragon. Lockheed? Yeah. Uh, they refer to that as a... Well, I don't know. Is it an alien or a dragon? I it's think. an alien. Um, <laughs> it's an alien dragon? But, yeah, you, it could be an alien dragon. But if, if we're talking the quintessential traits of a dragon, then I think it definitely needs to be reptilian in, in characteristic. Okay. Um, and I think it needs to be... Of extraordinary size, it needs to be some sort of megafauna. Um, but aside from that, I think there's a lot that's up for debate. So you, if, if you could get a dragon, if you could hit down like all the things, it flies, it breathes fire, it has like large talons, uh, but it's just small. That wouldn't be enough for you. I don't think that's a dragon. <laughs> No, no, it's, hey, it's your preference. I mean, it's, uh, I'm not saying, like, you're wrong. I'm just saying, like, I'm just wondering if that would not be enough. But that being said, um, one thing that we actually haven't talked about at all, and now this is something that I thought was really interesting, in a lot of kind of, like, stories, uh, dragons aren't just creatures of, like, brute strength 
there's a level of intelligence to them, or there's some type of weird psychic ability, like they can communicate telepathically, or they can they have more like premonitions and they can kind of see things coming before they actually do. I mean, it's it's hard to basically kind of think of that as like in a world that we currently have because that's just like you know not really real in an actual society. But like, is that something that a dragon needs to be able to have to be able to communicate like extrasensory? No. 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 I've I've seen that in a couple different formats as well that they're cunning and can talk, but. Eh. If it's a big lizard that breathes something at you, I'm willing to call it good. Even if it's just stupid? He's bumping into a wall? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Better bumping into the wall than eating you. I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, hey, it doesn't have to be one or the other. people, there could be <laughs> stupid dragons. <laughs> um, the next thing is being like what they look like. We talked about specifically those characteristics, and you talked about like reptilian. And that's kind of important because, I mean, uh, I think some of the Asian dragons do have kind of feathers, right? Some of them? Uh, yeah, like, there is an origin story about, like, a great dragon that the reason why, like, uh, Chinese dragons have, like, weird-looking faces and, like, the horns and stuff like that is they've gathered uh, attributes from other animals. So, like, they're not, they don't always have to be purely, like, certain kind. But they the body is usually a certain, and then sometimes, like, the claws can be tiger-like, or they can be, um, like, talons of an eagle, or things like that. Yeah, I think a yeah. lot in the eastern kind of dragons I've seen, that their hands almost do look like uh, like eagle hands, yeah. a lot of the more common representations yeah. that I've seen. I haven't seen a lot of the like the tiger types, um, but I mean, I have to admit, I, while I have done some research about dragons, because I'm, you know, a nerd, uh, I haven't like, gone that deep into it. There's a lot of it. interesting, <laughs> yeah, stories about Asian dragons. Well, there's even lore that I remember as a kid learning uh, that there was lore of the dragons that with the Asian ones. They were born as fish, and they mm. then you grow from there. Oh wow, that's yeah. awesome! That is crazy. The reason I bring this up is because there are some dragons. Uh, I, I'm going to probably horribly butcher the pronunciation, but they're technically considered dragons. Chictris or Chictris or uh, cockatrice. Thank you, thank you. There we go. You're much better than I. <laughs> they, have, they have beaks. Well, uh, as opposed to uh, uh, cockatrice, uh, properly speaking, is uh, a toad egg that has been incubated by being sat on by a rooster. <laughs> uh, and it, the general characteristics are slightly reptilian features on a chicken, including bat-like wings and a petrification gaze. Mm -hmm. As well as occasionally a poisonous breath of weapon. A lot of people do, do consider it in like the characteristic of a dragon. I know it doesn't fit your size, you know, requirement, but it I, I, I've it seen very it. large representations of cockatrice. <laughs> Strong, real big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to scale. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I wouldn't consider a cockatrice a dragon. It's it's a different it, sort of beast. Yeah, maybe put it in the same family as a phoenix or something. Would it be? Uh, would a beak be kind of an issue though? If a dragon had a beak. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about a winged creature. Would a beak be a problem? I don't see why it would be. So, I mean, that's not that's not a deal breaker, though. As long as it has a reptilian body, if it does have some features of a bird, it wouldn't be a big deal. Well, it, our, our current conceptions even have dinosaurs being feathered. It, yeah, well, like, the science is, is out there that we can have relatively large lizard-like beasts that evolve into... Chickens and turkeys. Let's be very clear here. We're, we're not talking about a world of reality. These dragons can be whatever you want them to be. They don't have to be feathered just because dragons are feathered. I mean, dinosaurs are feathered. So, I mean, if you won't like them as feathered, that's fine. I mean, modern reptilians don't. And they could actually take place after a dinosaur, so they'd be more closely connected to a reptile than they would a dinosaur. Because if, if a person, a human, fought a dragon like St. George supposedly did, then, I mean, they wouldn't be, like, dinosaurs. Well, no, but if if we go with the classic question, do you fight 40 chicken-sized horses or one horse-sized chicken? You, one horse-sized chicken. Easy you question. go with the horse-sized chicken because yeah. it's the closest you're going to get to slaying a dragon, and <laughs> it's, it's going to lead to a better feast afterwards. I honestly thought that the, the point of that question was not fighting a dragon. I thought it had to do with the fact of uh, when you do that, it's easier you kill one beast, whereas the... But I love that. I love that concept a lot better. Yeah. It's like it's the closest we'll get to fighting a dragon. Yeah, done. I'm happy with this this plan from now on. That has switched that hole in my mindset. 
Um, the one last thing I want to ask you before we move on to the next segment, which is which are my favorite part that I'm really excited to get into, but do you personally think, we go by one by one, do you personally think dragons did at some point or do exist? Not dinosaurs, dragons. Again, it depends on how we're defining it. If, if we go back to early Triassic period, we've got very large lizard megafauna. Um, so if, if we're just asking, were there giant lizards that weren't dinosaurs, the answer is yes, provided that we have a very precise understanding of the distinction between a dinosaur and a very large lizard. Now that you skirted the issues, the traditional dinos- uh, dragon issue, do you think... <laughs> no, <laughs> unequivocally no. There were never dragons. Hopefully there never will be. <laughs> You're not going to like this next part of it. Um, <laughs> but what do you think, Stephen? Uh, I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> I'm going to have to say no until evidence proves me wrong. <laughs> but I do hope they are. They do show up. That would be kind of nice. Just, I like the idea of people running in terror. <laughs> <laughs> I would like them to exist, but... But exist know. way over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, like, some of the dragons in different lore have been more, like, benevolent sometimes. So they're not necessarily, like, monsters. So I would like that relationship with, you know, like, a cool, awesome dragon that I can, like, be buddies with, but... I don't know. If you're going to get taken out, might as well be by a dragon. <laughs> be a great story. <laughs> Unfortunately, the bad news for the people who are naysayers, technically dragons do exist. Currently, they're called Komodo dragons. It's kind of a trick oh, question. I apologize for throwing you guys in that uh-huh. one. Uh, I mean, to be honest, does a Komodo dragon fit, though? I mean, it is a reptile that is that can grow to a larger size than more modern reptiles. Uh, they don't breathe fire, but they do spit poison. Uh, <laughs> in the way that their mouths are just bacteria farms. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they have kind of talons. They don't have the wings, but we said they don't really technically yeah, need to have wings to a degree. Damn quick. I know, right? <laughs> I mean, if someone basically they just like... Too? They oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, if someone sewed a pigeon to the back of one, would it count as a dragon? Okay, how did you manage to sew it on there without it biting you? I'm just, I just can't, <laughs> I can't help but think about that episode of The Simpsons. I don't, yeah. like, <laughs> but I don't know where you went with that. <laughs> like, just if it had wings, if a Komodo dragon just somehow had wings, from just a little genetic engineering, a little CRISPR in there. That never ends badly. Yeah. Yeah, that would be terrible. That would be, that would be yeah, a dragon, right? Of assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a dragon, for sure. So technically, hypothetically speaking, we could, in theory, see dragons in the next, like, ten years if someone decides to go crazy with that idea. So wings onto a Komodo dragon? Or just genetically engineer one. <laughs> Like, yeah, I throw think a little so chicken in there. Be a little comical. Yeah. <laughs> they don't actually just work. Like it just runs around with like wings. Yeah. Especially if they're only the size of a chicken's wings. Just a little... <laughs> Though I would watch that YouTube video. <laughs> so, so you know the movie How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, the dragon gets injured, and the character Hiccup builds actually a little like wing kind of tail wit rig for him. Oh, right. If you built a rig like that that worked for a Komodo dragon, dragon. Throw it off the tall building. And it's going to glide. It's going to glide. It glide, it can control it. If I had a rig like that, would I be an angel? Like, that's... <laughs> I mean, what do you do with your rig? If you're doing good deeds, sure, you'd be an angel to me. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're carrying a flaming sword, too? Because I might believe you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, a uh, hand glider isn't, you know, an angel by those definitions. You're using it's an artificial so means in order to give it abilities that it didn't have before. Well, in my opinion, a dragon is to the same level of an angel. Like a winged human is different than an angel would be. A winged human's a freak. An angel carries a flaming sword and does God's wrath. <laughs> well, then your answer would be, no, it, it wouldn't be a dragon. It, it would, would be, be a winged freak. Oh, yeah, but it's, it is a reptile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I honestly, I hope one day that someone's genetically engineered to wing some one foot of dragon. That messed up? I might be messed up. You need to watch more Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> you, you raise a good point. There's something that I, will, I will agree that I should probably read more. Or, well, I can read it. Uh, I did read it before. But moving on to the next part. And this is, uh, can you build a traditional dragon? Now, this isn't an animal. This isn't talking about genetic engineering. This is talking about using skills of like electronics and mechanics to assemble a 
representation, at least reasonably, to that of a dragon. Well, I mean, there is the pizza dragon. A pizza dragon. It's a food booth. And they have a they made a giant pizza oven, but did it out of a metal. This is the one that is at the Labyrinth of Jareth Ball every year, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, that is. And for Labyrinth, we did build it. We built that uh, ice dragon that we have on stage every year. Mm. So, I'll, I'll but go that's on. just the head. Yeah. No, we didn't do the full body of it. So, hypothetically speaking, um, flying would be a big thing. Because we talked about flying, the dragon should fly, it should have wings, it should be able to fly. Mm -hmm. Or at least fly by some other form. I mean, if we build a Harrier jet one, I guess it would technically work. But I mean, I want to see wings, right? If we're going to build a flying mechanical dragon, I want wings. Do you guys think it's possible? I mean, if you got a helicopter and really, like, fix it up. <laughs> <laughs> you could. You just have to worry about the weight. Yeah. yeah. The weight and the wing ratio. Well, because you're building this from scratch, you could take, like, the bird theory to play. So the reason why birds are easier to fly is because their bones are a little more hollow. They're not built like, you know, mankind is, where we have these dense bones, because they're designed to be a little bit lighter for the flight. So if you build this thing out of lightweight materials, I mean, hypothetically speaking, it could still be able to do what it needs to do. Uh, for instance, there is a bat uh, that was created by, I'm going to read the name real quick because I don't want to butcher it, uh, Sun Ju Chung, uh, and the UIUC created a thing called BatBot, a.k.a. B2. Uh, this thing, it looks like a bat. It is all plastic. It's got like a kind of like a like a thin plastic kind of film for the, the actual leathery skin. And it's got little parts to activate and move. And it flies just like a bat. So it can take off. It glides a bit. It actually uses its wings. It can control things. It doesn't like just go like flapping as fast as it can to keep, you know, up above the ground. But it literally can fly across a room just like a bat would. And it is... I recommend anyone who's watching this to go and look up this BatBot B2. It is so cool and so freaky at the same time. And just watching it, like, as they're holding it, articulate and move the pieces around to be able to get that effect is, like, yeah. crazy as well. Because hmm. it uses uh, two different forms. It has things that come out the bottom that control the back bottom part of the, the body for the, the bat. And then it has the parts that actually do the flapping. Mm -hmm. And then control also kind of like the way it moves in that same part. So it can get these really, like, articulated, like, kind of, like, wing flaps that you would get out of a living creature that you usually wouldn't be able to get out of like a mechanical flying creature. So, I mean, hypothetically, we could build that. It just becomes an issue of weight versus, you know, you know lift. Right. Um, and I remember specifically reading at one point that a human being could fly, even with its weight in its kind of situation, as long as it had a 20-foot wingspan. I think so, some of the folks at this table would need a bit more than 20 feet. I would need a bit more than 20 feet. Eric could get away with at least probably like 18. <laughs> I don't know. I want a big wingspan. You want a big I want wingspan. To make impact. Just again. <laughs> yeah. Besides into the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, hypothetically speaking, I mean, it's it looks like creating a robot dragon, it could fly. Like a dragon would fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but. Yeah, with the same sort of mechanisms. Yeah, on a larger scale. You should have to look at gliding versus actual body lift. Yeah. Like from the, if you're talking about pulling itself up to air from the ground versus mm -hmm. just jumping off a cliff and gliding. Yeah. So it depends, but I think it's possible. It takes somebody a lot smarter than me to do it. <laughs> Let me just you know go over and steal all the research over <laughs> UAUC, right? Just, just take all that, just move along with that. You also need to steal their degrees in aerodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> no, just take their design and scale it up. <laughs> That's how that works, right? <laughs> well, it looks like you guys let me say. Well, one of the one of the characteristics of dragons that we didn't really hit on is the extraordinary resilience they are. Mm, armor. They are very difficult to defeat. You, you need to find the one vulnerable scale and pierce it precisely with the special black arrow. It's they, they are notoriously difficult to kill. Yeah, and right. if we're working on just scaling up an existing bat bot and using ultra lightweight materials so that we don't have to worry about the lift, what kind of resilience are we going to have? Well, I mean, the great thing actually about modern technology as opposed to prior technology is that we have such lightweight uh, defensive things that we have nowadays, like Kevlar. 
but Kevlar is very resilient to puncture damage, such as like an arrow. Um, but it doesn't require a lot of weight, depending on the types. I, I don't know how how much Kevlar have you worn? Uh, well, that I stuff mean, can get pretty heavy. Yeah, but considering like an armor that you would have to do normally in the past, based off like an iron base to get like even close to like what Kevlar can do, it's it's the weight difference is a lot less. And carbon so, fiber. Carbon fiber is also another feature. But I mean, you mix a little bit of carbon fiber with a thin layer of Kevlar, like they're doing with more army and military, but they actually use more of a um, a ceramic base within a little bit of Kevlar on top, then you can basically take 50 caliber like bullets with those and still be able to take that deflecting off there with more energy dispersion. So, I mean, it's possible to still kind of get that level of like armor and, and damage without basically destroying it. Hypothetically, you would have to skill up the wings, though, for the weight you add for that armor. I mean, it's I don't think it's a, a deal breaker, but it's definitely, you know... To be tricky. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a big thing about the flight, though. You do have to, you know, measure the wingspan to work with the weight. And the longer you make the wings, the more powerful you're going to need to make whatever you're using to actuate them. And even then, the longer the individual segments of the wing get, the more torque you're going to be putting on yeah. the tips of the wings. It, it can't scale up infinitely. It's no, that's very true. I mean, in my opinion, I, I think this would work probably on, like, a dog-shaped, like, sized dragon, but, like, if you wanted to go for, you know, a, like a school bus size dragon, you're going to have a lot of problems. Even if you do do the short bus size school bus dragon, you know, it's going to still be uh, a lot harder to get that much lift. Because with a human, it's 20 feet. If you're going with, like, an automobile sized creature, I mean, you're probably going, like, more like 50, 60, even 70 feet wingspan, and that's going to be tough. And that's before you take into account that even using lightweight, durable materials, it's still going to be made out of plastics and metals and not yeah. meat. Yeah. But, I mean, meat's dense. Some out, like, you can get alloys and things like that that are a little bit thinner, and then just worry about the, the exterior being more tough than the interior. Because if the exterior is taking all the brunt and the power, you just need basically something that's not going to, that's going to be more rigid to take the, the force to disperse the weight upon. And then you can technically still, in a way, get through it. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. None of this is easy. I mean, breaking into UIUC is not going to be easy. <laughs> oh, but a tale we can tell. Oh, man. No, I, just, I robbed a robot bat specs. <laughs> That's a story you can put on your resume. <laughs> but the next thing I want to talk about, though, is breathing fire. So, in my opinion, it's not enough to just put a flamethrower in this thing. It's not enough. Because that's easy. Everyone can make a flamethrower. Elon Musk made a flamethrower and sold it online to like 100,000 people, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that he built it. Okay. Well, I, yeah. Yeah, they constructed it and sold it. Did they deliver? What they deliver? I don't know. I'm pretty sure they did because there was a whole thing about the kid who played Carl on Walking Dead having one and he filmed himself playing with it. <laughs> so... <laughs> that just, it, it seems ridiculous to me why a car come to a naked flamethrower. Hey, whatever it means into the day. But that being said, I mean, I would prefer something that basically was more of a self-sustaining system. Something that where they can call on it for a longer period of time. And I'm not saying it has to be constantly able to work, but something that after a period of time of, like, recouping, it would be able to do it again. Mm. And so... You would need some sort of fuel. Kind of going back to what yeah. Lucky said about the chewing up the limestone, create gases. Maybe if it ate a supply of sulfur on a regular basis or... So I actually thought about this, and I remember there's there's a specific condition. Uh, it's a um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, Auto brewery syndrome. So this is a no. It's, it's an actual. <laughs> Sounds like a syndrome I want. No, it's, 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 uh, you don't get the joy of uh, drinking a beer as so much as the beer's already in you. So this is a really weird condition where uh, what happens is the bacteria in your stomach basically forms a rudimentary. Um, like, uh, what's one of them for? Uh, distillation. Fermentation. fermentation system, where they basically it takes the, the food that you process and eat, uh, and it turns it into alcohol. And so what happens is the body will actually start absorbing that alcohol, and the person will be constantly drunk. How and common is this? I so never it's, it's this. not super common, but it does occur. And people have basically gotten, like, drunk driving tickets and, like, gotten accidents or fallen or hurt themselves because they were drunk, but they had no way to know they were drunk because they hadn't been drinking. And so when they checked their stomach, the bacteria that was basically causing the situation was found. It was like, oh, it's not your fault. It's this. So hypothetically speaking, could you use a system like this to, in essence, feed a dragon, and it basically takes that, ferments it, and creates like a almost like a fuel sack, 
Well, fermentation wouldn't get you there. It's not going to be high enough proof. You would need a, like a proper distillation process to, to get high enough proof alcohol to actually burn. But I mean, is, is it possible to take that as just one part of a stage, though? It could it basically take like a food source that you give it, turn that into a kind of an alcohol that then gets further processed with another bladder in the stomach? Do you want a mechanical dragon that eats potatoes and spits vodka? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> First of all, like forget the fire at this point. I am, I am for this plan now. Yeah. I'll move, I'll drink dispenser. <laughs> but I mean, like hypothetically speaking, could that be possible? We might not know the exact mechanics behind it, but is it possible to do that? Well, back to the, the weight-to-lift ratio stuff. Liquids yeah. are quite an issue. And if you're building a still into yeah. a yeah. flying dragon... Stills can be lightweight. I mean, you could go with, like, plastics, thin layers. Uh, no. Yeah, but to get the size of the breath that you want shooting out of yeah. this thing... We never talk about the size of the breath. I mean, I, I'm okay with a little small puff. <laughs> Aren't you able to do it regularly, right? You, uh, you spit fire, don't you? Do, do I recall you <laughs> yes, breathing yeah. fire at some point? <laughs> yeah, uh, for some of our shows, I've done fire breathing, but that's putting a mouthful of fuel and spitting it at an already lit flame. There's actually something really funny that I read somewhere that humans are the, I think, the only animal on the planet that can do that. That can take alcohol in their mouth and then uh, project it in that way where they'd be able to light it on fire. Like, you wouldn't be able to do that with, say, any other animal on the planet. I mean, you wouldn't want to. For one, that's just dangerous. I don't think any other animal has thought of that. No. You know, I like wonder, the person who decided uh, to test that there. It has to do with the structure. We have lips. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot to do with that. And other monkeys yeah, that's true. wouldn't be able to, but I mean, they're not going to want to. No, it, they're smarter than we are. It's like, <laughs> here, drink this high proof you know, alcohol and spit at this flame, they're going to go running. So <laughs> when, you, when you breathe fire, it's not just a matter of just like, you know, straight like spitting out alcohol. There's like a level of kind of control to yeah, it. Yeah, you kind of... <sighs> yeah, and so like... You're misting it. Exactly. And so it's, 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 it's that about that mentality of kind of like almost aerating the, alco- the, the fluid, the fuel outwards and being able to control to the degree that only apparently humans are able to like finally do. And so I thought it was really weird. I was like, I don't know what rabbit hole I went down online to find that. But it was just a really interesting concept of that, like, that technique is very unique to humans. Well, yeah, but I'm with her. I think it's, I no think, I think yeah. apes could. Yeah. I don't think they have figured out that they can do it. But <laughs> I also don't think they do it. They probably can't see the benefit of it. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Right there. So, so maybe a show off ape. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. He gets all the extra food and the women from it. So, oh, and yes. you know, pours down the, the jungle and the woods around them. It gets yeah. back at all the enemies. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Once it's a good acquired plan. man's fire, you know. <laughs> he comes after man. <laughs> the jungle book makes so much sense now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I. That does go back to what he said though about you'd still have to have a. Reservoir of liquid that yeah. is extremely heavy, mm-hmm. and then you also need an ignition source. So I don't know, a pilot light or some maybe one tooth just constantly has a little bit of flame on it, and or maybe there's like a like a kind of a tongue system that it just like like sandpaper just like scrapes the roof of it, right. and that causes a spark igniting. Yeah. yeah, and some sort of I don't know lip like orifice in the throat to aerate the, to to spray it out. There's a I didn't think I never saw. <laughs> You create a nozzle, really. I mean, this is a machine. I mean, we don't have to like build like a humanoid type thing. But like, but hypothetically speaking, I would imagine that it might not be easy, and we might not be able to get every single part where it comes to flying and breathing fire. But I think hypothetically speaking, you could build a creature that could bring in a source of food, a robot, and then ferment that, and then be able to breathe like like fire from that form. I don't know how it could be great or amazing, but I think it's a technique that could. If you know worked on, could actually do something. So you want an AI robot that can fly and breathe fire? Oh yeah, you can oh, watch no. more Terminator. We're going to the next part. Right? <laughs> no. So that's the next part. Self-actuated. Can you make? A, and I, I'm gonna I'm throw this right out there. Have you seen the Spot Mini from Boston Dynamics? What? It's it's that dog that has like those little like little feet and that little mm-hmm. arm on its back. And it could run around 
I think I've seen this. <laughs> it's, it's a rudimentary <laughs> say this sounds like nightmare fuel. <laughs> It's Four actually, legs and an arm running around. Like, arm on his back. It goes around and grabs things. It's it like a, a clamping arm, arm <laughs> built into <laughs> almost the middle of its back that has a couple is of... I want to send that running down a dark, dark street. It's it an actual dog. Yeah, it's, it's horrifying. <laughs> it's, so it can, it can like go around and hit open doors. And this thing actually doesn't run so much on like, I want you to do this, so much as it runs on like, a, this is a general order. And it uses a rudimentary form of AI to be able to complete the task. Like a Roomba? More. <laughs> so, like, you say, go get me that soda. And, like, it'll be all like, okay, processor, try the soda. From what it understands what a soda should be. It goes over there. It'll use its arm to grab the soda. And it'll come over and bring it to you. And so, like, they actually put, like, certain personalities in this thing. So, like, it, it will kind of dance around like it's happy. Because, like, it's been programmed to be a happy robot. <laughs> Just worse and worse. <laughs> and so I'm sorry. I did not realize I was going to be terrifying you guys with this news today. <laughs> now imagine if that had wings that could breathe fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, and I thought I wanted the downfall of humanity. You seem to want more than any of us. Look, look. Is it really the downfall of humanity if we have dragons before we go? Yes. I mean, we went on a high note. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing like hiding Have from you your watched Rain of Fire? <laughs> I love Rain of Fire. <laughs> it's objectively a terrible, <laughs> terrible movie. I, to be honest, I loved it when I was younger, and I watched it not too long ago. I can see that it's not a great film, but I can still enjoy it. Did you ever see Dragon Slayer? Oh, I don't think I saw that one. Oh, that's an old movie. Yeah. But it had one of the best uh, dragon puppets that I'd ever seen. And for its time, I still think it, it's good. The main hero is that guy from Ghostbusters 2. With the, oh, God. It's Weagle! That guy. Oh, got you, yes. He is the hero. He is the hero? He is the hero in the movie Dragon Slayer. Well, I'm glad he got a big role. He has a blonde perm. Oh, my gosh, no. Oh, it's, it's I amazing. I did not watch this movie? Yes. It's a great movie. Oh, but I mean, hypothetically speaking, if, if Boston Dynamics can make that dog be able to do basic things like that, if we were to put like an AI into our dragon bot, in theory, it could do the same. Yeah. But its drives would be fly, find potatoes, breathe fire? Oh my gosh, if it can find potatoes, that makes my job easier. <laughs> I don't have to feed it. It just goes and eats on its own. <laughs> yeah, at that point, if it can handle rudimentary things like that, you'd have a fuel level on it and... If fuel gets low, go find potatoes. Eggs. Oh, and its mouth mashes it, turns it into a potato mask for easier uh, fermenting. Oh, I'm loving this. I was hoping it was going to be fries. Is what I was going for. <laughs> it, it, it could be a yeah, side. A French yeah. fry spinning dragon. <laughs> French, it, it cooks it them. Keeps some of the potatoes in reserve, and then with the fire, it cooks. And then it the just walks over and drops the potatoes in, in your the French fries yeah. in your hands. And then it fries this. ketchup. Oh, no, that's a little dark. Sounds <laughs> 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 disturbing. <laughs> He just wants to like, would you like ketchup? <laughs> just head take a fry. Here, let me wipe that off for you. It is delicious. <laughs> that is so dark. <laughs> <laughs> Worse than your four-legged hand box. <laughs> God, that thing is, is, you do need it. Anyone who hasn't seen uh, the spot well, it doesn't mini. have, like, a head, right? It's so, just, no. like, a body with legs. It's and kind of like a torso, right? but it does have, like, a... Tail, like creepy thing. On the front where the, where the of the torso, there's like a, a camera on there. There's also a camera on the back where the butt would be. <laughs> but like that's kind of in there its head. Yeah. But yeah. the funny thing is, there are models without the arm, models with the arm, and then usually the way the system is designed uh, with the arm one is that it will use its arm primarily as a source of like reaction for people, as like a head would be. <laughs> Which could be a little bit creepier. Like it'll be all like, "Oh, do you want that?" And it'll go like with the arm. Oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. You're out. I'm out. 100%. You know? No. So, there's one last question before we're done. It's, it's a really important one. Let's see if it's uh, sparks. Dear God. It's, it's really important. All the things we've considered today and talked about, should we, as a society, build self-actuated, robotic, flying, potato-eating, mashing, alcohol-fermenting, fire-breathing dragons? Absolutely not. <laughs> No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I he, think. Uh, he wants to see the world burn. <laughs> I want to see the world burn. I can't help it. If it's only minor programming, then sure. 
because then it'll just be like a mobile, like, you know, you can have your drinks, you can have your fries, it's a whole thing. <laughs> it but makes you like, like a martini and then it becomes like angry at like its <laughs> own existence, then no. Father, <laughs> why did you create me? <laughs> I will say specifically about My the... tears hurt. <laughs> 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 I will say about the Spot Mini, it's been around for a little bit now, and it has not turned against its owners. So that's a good sign for longevity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, I mean, like, it's been around... Skynet for, didn't turn immediately either. Yeah. It's been around for about two-ish years now, so, I mean, hypothetically speaking, I get yeah. two years with a dragon at minimum, I'm good. But I would want a small one. I want, like, a little pet. Small Which, pet. we go back to it, not being a dragon. <laughs> yeah, her, her part of the table, I agree. <laughs> But, I mean, me personally, it's a lot easier to keep a, a flame-breathing small dragon if it's this big. Yet, the Spot Mini also is not a sentient flamethrower. <laughs> well, it's... Like... I, I didn't say sentient. I said self-actuated. Okay, self-actuated flamethrower. Yeah. When, there's, there's absolutely no purpose to which we could put a self-actuated flamethrower that sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> <laughs> Some rich billionaire would love it. I'm sure. Imagine that doesn't make it a good idea. <laughs> Imagine no, it the only attacks your solicitor exists. at your door. Again, oh, I don't want to set people mm. on fire for the crime <laughs> of bothering me. You're saying this out. Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a day that goes by. I can't think of a reason to have something like that. <laughs> so then we're, we're in agreement then. Most of us are in agreement. Yeah. Yes. That guy cut me off in traffic. Go get him, Spike. Yeah. <laughs> he just jumps <laughs> out of the car and flies <laughs> <up> the <laughs> fire. <laughs> Now, hypothetically speaking, on that point, I will put this out real quick. If you could have a dragon that you send out when someone cuts you off, hypothetically, the guy that cut you off could throw it, send a dragon out too. And then you have an epic, like, air dragon battle that, well, one thing looks cool, but two, will probably cause a traffic accident or at least... Well, he you know, cut you sort. off. He's going to create an accident anyway, so... <laughs> I'm just saying, like, yeah. traffic slows down because there's a dragon fight on the freeway in the 405. It's bad enough as it is. Yeah, but that'd be something I could get behind. It's going to slow down anyway. Yeah, you least in entertainment yeah. while you're sitting in traffic. You will be getting behind it because of the traffic. <laughs> Gee, that'd be awesome. It's like I'm going to be stuck. Oh, good shot. Yeah. I'm in. Well, oh, man, I've loved this discussion so much. This is... I. I think this one currently, and I'm not being like rude to the other episodes, but I think this is probably my favorite one so far. <laughs> and like, there's been some really good episodes so far. But I love this one. Uh, before we go, I just want to give you, I want to give you guys an option to shout out anything you guys want to shout out. Uh, for instance, maybe someone wants to talk with this awesome place, but we'll let them get at their time. Why don't you start, Paul? Anything you want to shout out? No, I'm good. Um, we filmed the episode at my shop, Seven Daily Fairies. It's in Pasadena at two seven two five East Colorado Boulevard. We'll have a dragon puppet at Labyrinth this year again. If you want to see a giant dragon head breathe ice. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, it's a CO2. Oh, that's, that's so cool. That's cool. Anything you want to show <laughs> Well, again, thank you guys so much for watching us. Uh, if you want to see more of these, we do have four other ones on right now, at least. Uh, more coming down the line. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you next time.